How's it going everyone? This is Boots with Snapkeep Arcade, back with more Guilds of Ravnica spoilers. Wizards just had their Guilds of Ravnica panel at PAX and spoiled a ton of new cards, so let's dive right in. First, let's look at the cards spoiled for the Is It leak. Quasi Duplicate is a sorcery that costs one blue blue. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Quasi Duplicate also has Jumpstart, a new mechanic that lets you cast the card from your graveyard by discarding a card and paying its other costs before exiling the card. I'm not sure this card is that great in Constructed and doesn't seem like that big of a limited bomb either, but what I think is most interesting about this card is the Jumpstart mechanic. With all the graveyard interactions in Guilds of Ravnica, I could see this mechanic printed on some very powerful Constructed cards next season. I don't think Quasi Duplicate will make the cut, but I'm keeping my eye out for a powerhouse Jumpstart card to be spoiled. Next up we have our first Planeswalker of the set, Ral Is It Viceroy. Ral costs 3 colorless, blue, and a red, with a starting loyalty of 5. His plus 1 ability lets you look at the top 2 cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the other into your graveyard. His minus 3 deals damage to target creature equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. His ultimate is minus 8 and says you get an emblem with whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, this emblem deals 4 damage to any target and you draw 2 cards. I think this card is pretty awesome, but I think it's gonna need the right deck to see constructed play. Ral provides card advantage, synergizes with the graveyard, which seems to be a big theme in Guilds of Ravnica, and protects himself with his minus three ability, which could be very powerful in the right build by turn five. I'm really interested to see how much play Ral sees. Next up, we have cards from the Selesnia Conclave. With cast out rotating next month, our first Selesnia card seems to be the top contender to replace it. Conclave Tribunal is an enchantment that costs three colorless and a white. It also has Convoke. When Conclave Tribunal enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Conclave Tribunal leaves the battlefield. This card is great, and I think it will see plenty of play throughout the next two years it's legal. Being able to use your creatures to cast this spell is extremely powerful. Get ready to see your planeswalkers ruthlessly sentenced by the Selesnian Tribunal. Amara, Soul of the Accord, costs a green and a white for a 2-2 legendary elf cleric. Whenever Amara, Soul of the Accord, becomes tapped, create a 1-1 white soldier creature token with lifelink. I love this card. Because Convoke is back in standard, token generators like Amara are going to be very valuable. Even if you can't attack with Amara, you can use her with Convoke itself to get you a token, or pair her with a vehicle to get a token when she crews. I know a lot of the playable vehicles are rotating out, but we'll see if they print a good one in Guilds of Ravnica. If not, we still have the Weatherlight and the Ixalan vehicles to consider. Let's take a look at the cards spoiled for House Demir. Sinister Sabotage costs one colorless, blue, blue, is instant speed, and says counter target spell. Sinister Sabotage also has the new Demir mechanic, Surveil, which has you look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. Seeing as some of our best counters are rotating out of standard, such as Disallow and Supreme Will, there is a vacuum for counter spells. I think Sinister Sabotage will fill the role of the best hard counter in standard for quite a while. Back in 2013, Dissolve was printed in Theros and was a great counter spell. Even though Disallow is easily a more powerful spell, I think Surveil will be more relevant and impactful in your average game than the amount of times a typical player cast a Disallow to counter a Planeswalker ultimate. Another thing to consider is that Surveil Veil helps you flip Search for Ascanta faster, so at this point I'm pretty sold on Surveil and Sinister Sabotage. Thought Erasure costs a blue and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Surveil 1. I'm interested to see if this card is played. There are no conditional effects besides non-land when choosing which card your opponent discards, and the Surveil tacked on doesn't hurt at all. I'll be keeping my eye on this card to potentially fill a slot in my sideboard. Next up, we have two cards for the Golgari Swarm. First, we have Necrotic Wound, an instant speed spell for one black mana that gives target creature minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. This card will be good in limited, but I really don't see it being played in constructed. As somebody said online, it's hard to turn on early and there are better options for removal late game. Under Realm Lich costs 3 colorless mana, 
a black and a green for a 4-3 zombie elf shaman creature. If you would draw a card, instead look at the top three cards of your library, then put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Underrealm Lich also lets you pay four life to give Underrealm Lich indestructible until end of turn, requiring you to tap him. I think this card is amazing. Yes, it doesn't do much the turn it comes down, but it has built-in protection and the card draw ability is absolutely insane. It replaces your draw step with a strategic planning. That's crazy. I'm telling you guys, the graveyard is going to play a massive role in next season's metagame, and I see Underrealm Lich right at the center of it all. And last but not least, we have two cards for the Boros Legion. Boros Challenger costs a red and a white for a 2-3 human soldier. Boros Challenger has Mentor, which says whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. Boros Challenger has an activated ability that costs two colorless and a red and a white and gives him plus one plus one until end of turn. This card will be a decent pickup in draft, but doesn't feel like a constructed playable card at all. However, this next card is one I think is arguably the best card spoiled so far. If it can find the right home, this card will be the bane of our existence for quite a while. Legion Warboss costs two colorless and a red for a 2-2 Goblin Soldier. Legion Warboss also has Mentor. Whenever he attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. But Legion Warboss also has a very familiar ability. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 Red Goblin creature token. That token gains haste until end of turn and attacks this combat if able. For those of you who were around when Goblin Rabble Master was legal and standard, you'll know how much potential this card has. I still haven't quite figured out if Legion Warboss is better than Rabble Master or not, but one thing is for sure, do not sleep on this card. Outside of the guilds, we're also getting a reprint of Narco Amoeba. This card costs one and a blue for a 1-1 illusion with flying. Whenever Narco Amoeba is put into a graveyard from your library, you may put it onto the battlefield. This may see some play in standard, depending upon if those graveyard decks are looking for a card like this, but this is mostly just a welcome reprint for modern dredge players. And it would not be Ravnica without the return of Shock Lands. These lands are extremely powerful. They synergize well with the Czech lands already in Standard, and will make Standard a much faster format next season. I recommend picking up paper copies of these cards while they're still in print because they're played in older formats and are just great to have. That does it for Snapkeep Arcade today. Make sure to like this video and let me know in the comments what you think about these spoiler cards. Which ones are you most excited for and which ones do you think I'm totally wrong about? If you like this video, please subscribe to Snapkeep Arcade and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new video. This has been Boots with Snapkeep Arcade. Thanks for watching.